Hi, welcome to the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory at uh, Johnson Space Center, or really close to it, where we are doing some work today with the Orion program. That's our new spaceship that's going to take humans into space next. Um, and uh, we're actually working on rescue and recovery operations. This is Tom Wa Walker, who is the uh, lead for what rescue and recovery for Orion. He's going to tell us a little bit about that. Thanks so much for joining us, Tom. Sure, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so rescue and recovery. Why do we, why do we need that for Orion? For Orion, um, we're going to do a mission in 2014 called Exploration Flight Test 1, where our capsule is going to land off the coast of uh, Baja out in the water. So what we need to do is pick the capsule out of, out of the water, put it on a ship, and bring it back to port. Okay, and that sounds pretty straightforward, that, but I that's, guess... That's the recovery operations, Yeah. because that's an uncrewed flight. When we have a crewed mission in 2021, we'll also be looking at doing uh, setting up for rescue operations. So if there was ever a problem getting to orbit and we landed out in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, we'd send rescue forces out to get the crew out of the vehicle as well. Okay, so right now we're getting ready for exploration flight test one. That's, That's coming up in a little over two, little less than two years now. That's so. right. So, you know, it's two years away. Why is it, is it hard? Why are, you, why are you starting this now? Why we're starting this now is, um, we're, the way we're gonna do recovery on exploration flight test one is we're gonna have a well deck ship from the Navy go out to collect this. That ship goes out in the water. It actually lowers a, a, a hatch in the back, and we pull the uh, crew module into that hatch into a cradle, kind of like a boat trailer. Would okay. work. So what we're doing now is we're bringing the, the Navy experts out and teaching them all the hazards of the capsule, how to interface with the capsule, so we can not only learn how to recover it, teach them how to do it, mm -hmm. but also we're building all our equipment. So we're testing out hardware and stuff to interface with the vehicle, and we need time to develop that. Okay. What kind of things, what kind of questions are you asking? What, what do you have to consider? What we have to consider is um, there is ammonia on the vehicle that vents at landing, so we have to teach them where that danger is and how to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. There's several areas of the vehicle that are really, really hot at landing, so those are keep-out zones that we don't want them uh, getting around. Um, there's also, to get the uh, crew module into the vehicle, there's attach points on the vehicle, three of them. So we're teaching them how to hook into that, those attach points so we can pull the capsule into the vehicle. Okay. So we're also developing what's the best hardware to do that. Uh -huh. And this training development that we're doing now is all set up for next summer. We're gonna go to Norfolk. We're gonna get together with the ship's crew and a ship out in the, har in the uh, port out there. And we're gonna take a capsule like we have back there out into the Chesapeake Bay, and we're actually going to do a practice recovery of it. Okay. So that's what all this today is leading towards. So this is almost the practice for the practice. This is a practice in a nice, calm environment before we go out and do it in a bay. And then in January of uh, 2014, we're going to go off San Diego. We're going to take a capsule just like that. We're going to take it out into the ocean and do a practice recovery so we can do it in a real environment just like we'd see for uh, Exploration Flight Test 1. Okay. Um, so, I guess Orion's landing in water, that's why we're doing all this, and right. that saves us some weight, right? That's right. We Back in the design phase, that saved us about 1,500 pounds of mass. That's very important to get that off there because we need to be as light as possible since we're going to go all the way out to the moon and beyond. Okay. And does it make it easier or harder to, to recover it in, in the water? It's actually just a little bit harder to recover it in the water. On the land, it's something you can just walk up to and it's, you don't have to have like a ship out there and mm -hmm. stuff. So it is it is a lot, little bit easier on land to recover it. There's advantages to water. Most, all the chemicals that we have on board, mm -hmm. they're water soluble, so the water actually helps with the, the chemicals we have on board the Okay, vehicle. that's interesting. I guess we see we see land, land landings with the Soyuz a lot, so we're kind of used to that, but of course we've seen water landings too. That's how right. Apollo landed, and um, so we have experience there, but. And take it this is a little different than what we've done in the past yes this is this capsule here is a lot bigger than a soyuz it's a lot bigger than the apollo right so the landing systems were going to be really heavy to get it to land on land and since we always protect for aborts with the crew on board we were always going to have to land in the water so no matter what we were going to have to design a system that worked in the water okay that makes sense well thanks so much for talking with us and right. uh, how's the testing going so far it's going very well we're learning a whole lot this week all right we'll be back uh, at the end of january to go through some other techniques some contingency operations as well. Okay. And we're going to talk with somebody else who's working on the test a little later in the hour, so we'll be back. But for now, we'll go back to Mission Control. Thanks so much.